So today we are reading Sri Sri Vilapa Kushmandali, verse 14, huh? Kishore Chus. Oh, yes. Reading. Verse 14. O Queen of Vrindavan, ever since some manjari named Rupa filled my eyes with light in Brajabhumi, I have strongly desired to see the red lack on your lotus feet. O oh, Queen of Vrindavan, ever since some manjari named Rupa filled my eyes with light in Brajabhumi, I have strongly desired to see the red lack on your lotus feet. Notes. In the previous verse, Sri Raghunath attained a very sweet vision of Srimati's Shukla Vishar rendezvous in the moonlight night. And when that vision vanishes, he experiences intolerable pain of separation. The more bliss was felt during union, the more misery is felt during separation. The maidservants of Sri Radha are the embodiments of devotional service. And when they are deprived of that service, they are feeling so much pain. Radhe, Radhe, can someone elaborate on this? Or maybe Gurudev can explain the meaning of this. The maid servants of Sri Radha are the embodiments of devotional service. And when they are deprived of that service, they are feeling so much pain. Karanga Sundar, Suniti, Tarun, other Vaishnavas who are more advanced, can you please help? Radhe Radhe. <coughs> Jai Ho Jai Nanda Radhe. So, Sri Radha. Is embodiment of Mahababa. Mm -hmm. 
So here, the maid servant of Sri Nanda as the embodiment of devotional service. So Mahababa is the highest feeling and someone who serves Mahababa, that person know and feel so much excess, so much feeling. So therefore, <coughs> Radha Dashi, we may say, they are doing the best, best service to Sri Radha and Radha's Mohan. Because they are selfless. They don't expect anything. They are so tender, so pure, so humble, so low also. And so this Manjari also knew the feeling of Radhika, also feeling of Radha's Mohan. So they are just uh, always ready to serve them, divine couple. Whatever they like, time, place, circumstances. So they are doing so much seva. Actually, bhakti is very mystery. Because this seva, service, bring us so much pleasure. So therefore, if Manjari or Manjari, they are doing seva for Radha and Radha's Mohan. <coughs> this kind of natural position. They are in the pleasure, you know, they are in the pleasure giving potency. They are always uh, say, in blissful mood of seva. So just like uh, Lada and Lada's Mohan meet together and unite together, they feel so much happiness. But if they separate, they feel so much pain. So similarly, for Manjari, if they uh, if they deprived the service of Radha and Radha's Moha, they feel so much separation. Without Seba, they cannot survive. Without Radharani, they cannot survive. Because they are thinking, I'm yours, you are mine. So that feeling intensified by the service and more and more. So this sentence surely is pointing out this is very deep meaning. I really I don't understand. If somebody could help us give us more point, more explanation, it would be very nice. If I, <coughs> if I may just come closer to my Jananaji, who is just an ocean of inspiration to all of us. Um, actually, this verse 
is so essential for the Manjaris. It's just um, so crucial. It's here, it's about the survival of us. If we want to be a Manjari, then this verse explains that actually, as Jananda, you said, without Seva, we cannot live anymore. Without Seva, we get depressed. Without Seva, we feel empty. They cannot see you. Can you hear? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hearing is better than. <laughs> we can see. I can see you. Suniti, I see them. No, no, no. Yeah, now they are. Okay, sorry, because I need to see you also. I'm so stupid. Um, I can see you. I'm very fortunate. I can yeah. see you. So without Seva, life becomes empty. And I think all of us at some point make this experience that we feel sometimes empty because as in Chaitanya Charitamrita it said Jiva Raswarupa Hoy Nitya Krishna Das the Swarupa of the Jiva is to be a eternal servant of Swamini and here also it, it describes the path how to be an eternal servant she's saying In the pre, uh, where is that? Yeah. yeah, it's saying that you know my rupa, my rupa manjari has infused this to me. It means my guru manjari has infused this to me. I have no choice. I cannot go against the flow anymore. And if we go against the flow, we all feel. Something is not right, you know. We feel it inside. We don't feel it's natural anymore to go against. We want to be in the flow. And here I feel that's so crucial that it's Rupa Manjari has infused it. She has infused it. No, Radharani, I sometimes remember this explanation in this Leela. Radharani asked, Why you love me so much, Tulsi? Why? You know, why you love me so much? She said, because my Guru Manjari introduced you to me. I cannot it's think what it is. It's this verse. It's this verse. I know, I know, Kishore. <laughs> I cannot live anymore without you. So it's the fault of Guru Manjari. So when we feel empty and we feel low, we're not in our Seva Bhav, we're not in our natural flow, you know, then we know that actually we have to always look at the feet of Guru Dev, of Guru Manjari, you know, always fix ourselves there. This is really so beautiful, this verse. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you. Also, this is, also, this is very important, what, what you both said, Chayananda Maharaj and Gopina, that this word embodiment is so important in this verse. So the embodiment means that what is the body of a manjari? So the body of a manjari is made of bath. So this is what we humans have to transform, what we all as sadhakas has to have to transform this bhav from being the enjoyer in this world to be this what here in this verse is so, like Gopinath said, very crucial that actually we are not the enjoyer in this world. We are not the doer in this world. We are there to, to serve. So this bhav of the manjaris, actually it is said that the manjaris are more or less an expansion of Srimati Radhika. So we all, we actually, our Siddha Deha is very precious and is actually a body made of bhav. So these feelings, like Gurudev always is saying, these feelings have to be transformed from, from I, me and mine towards I serve you and I, I am there. But this is the whole process. This is a, it's not done in one second. Gurudev is saying we have to aim for 24-7 to do this. So this is a high task and this works only by the mercy of Guru and the Vaishnava. So that, that body, that embodiment, the manjaris, like Jayananda Maharaj said, and we very often times say, the Uchvalo Natas, Uchvalo Rasa, Unato Chvalo Rasa Svabhakti Shriyam. This highest feeling is only to be found in the hearts of the manjaris. So this is not an easy job. So we have to cling 
to the lotus feet of Gurudev and Guru Manjari and try to transform this inner feelings into that of the Manjari. So verses like that and commentaries from Baba and your explanations, this is essential to start and to uh, uh, make this process faster that we can transform this, this path into the real thing. So this is very, very important that we try to change the feelings. Jaiho, thank you, Tarun, so much for saying this because <laughs> that's exactly what my question was about. I've been looking for some months from this for this place where it is said that the Manjari Svarup is made of the devotional service. And my question is this, that if it says that if Baba is saying that the maidservants are the embodiments of devotional service and when they are deprived of that service, they are feeling so much pain. For me as a very fallen uh, person, I feel like I'm always deprived of that service, means I'm always in my Sadak Deha. So is this in a way? Um, that's a very that's a very that's a very good example I read many times and heard many times that um, to actually come into that state, it is like you make fire, you make you make iron, you put iron <laughs> in fire. So you put an iron rod into fire and so the iron rod after some time he will take on the qualities of the fire but it will not be fire it has the qualities of fire so but in the our body now we are now seeing ourselves as body mind and soul but this is when you reach this stage it is written that when you reach the stage of bath when you realize your form there is no more difference between this form and your feelings. So for our mind, it is very hard to understand. But it, I think it's very nice example that this fire, which transforms the iron, that is bhakti. So when we do Raganuga bhakti, Manjari bhav sadhana, that is the fire. And we put us in this fire. And so our consciousness will be transformed and we will take on that quality of that fire, of that mandrai bath, sadhana. So one time we will be that body. It will not be any more different. That feeling, that name you get from your Gurudev as a mandrai is not different from you. There is no more difference. The bhakti has so much power that this discrepancy between I and my body it's not that we are there and thinking, I have this body now as a mantra, we are that body. So this is what, what happens when the Mahajans say to realize, Varup, when we have no more big distinctions between these different bhavas. But it's a, it's a way to go. <laughs> so you all inspired me <clears throat> to give a picture on this which actually came in my mind so actually in the material body we have almost 100 percent 90 something percent our body is made of water Right. So we need the connection to the ocean. And we need somebody who is transporting the salty water into sweet water and bring it to us. Like the clouds. So in this way, through the clouds and to the water system, which is here, we actually are connected always to the ocean of water. And if we didn't have water, our body would die, right? So we know the comparison that Radharani is not just one ocean. She is an ocean of Mahabhav, 
Madanakya Mahabhav. But she is also so many oceans to us, an ocean of cleverness, an ocean of lavanya, an ocean of sweetness, and so on. So actually, the pure souls who are connected with this ocean, samsara dhava, nalalita loka, they actually sprinkle that water, that Mahabhav, on us, so we will survive. But if we are disconnected, then we will suffer, and not just suffer, we will die. The maid servants of Sri Radha are the embodiments, embodiments of devotional service. And when they are deprived of that service, they are feeling so much pain. Only the merciful glance of Swamini can revive the maidservant. Even in the stage of practice, a devotee must have some experience of this. When there is no experience, bhajan can be called lifeless. I am chanting the holy name but I don't relish the sweetness of the name. I am performing all items of devotion, like hearing, chanting, and deity worship, just like a machine. In Srimad Bhagavata, it is said, Just as the body is nourished, strengthened, and relieved from hunger by every mouthful of food that we take, devotion, experience of God, and renunciation of sense gratification all appear simultaneously when we do bhajan. So actually that means if we are connected through the bhajan that actually the bad quality is like a false ego, is just going itself. We don't have to endeavor. It is just going, actually. Well, just to be practical. Also, I'm oh, okay. oh, sorry. Yes. No, 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 no. You go. I just wanted to have a short uh, practical remark that like, for example, when we are in Vrindavan and um, we are sheltered by the mercy of Radha Mohan and all the Vaishnavas and we have 
like these beautiful meetings of Zoom and the whole day is uh, made of our devotional service, like going from one festival of, of beautiful exchanges to another, going to RT, going to do serve the Vaishnavas, going to serve Prem Prashad. The whole day is so much in this feeling of service that there is no need for anything else. There is no need felt. And that is, I think, a very practical experience that we all have when we have a beautiful Vrindavan mercy, uh, how do you say, to stay there and to serve there. Very nice. Also, what, what came to my mind here was that, why is Baba saying this? Gurdiv, if you hear this, you many times said, explained the why of that sentence you said, uh, Kishori. The, I am chanting and there is no relish. I am chanting, there is no sweetness. I am doing uh, deity worship and there is no sweetness and there is no taste. So, this is the question. And Gurdiv many times said, why? Why is there no taste? Why is there no no relish? Because we are not in stay above. We are not fixed. I can speak for myself. I many times experience this. If I don't see myself as a manchari, or if I see myself as this big German guy doing all these things, so relish is little. But if I have the power or the consciousness to do it as thinking myself in my study bath as a manjari, the chance that the relish, like good Baba is saying here, the sweetness will much more easily come if I know myself and if I am fixed in that. But like Suniti said in the Western world, it is not so easy. Everyone has this experience that in Vrindavan it is very, very much more easier and in the material, in this Western world, in the in the material realm where where everything is different, it is very much harder to to have this um, strength to be that in that type of all the time. So the challenge is much greater. So, but the relish may help us if we fix ourselves so much in this type of given by our guru. If this helps. If I may just uh, <laughs> add something to what uh, Sumiti Didi and, and Tarambaya were just pointing out, the uh, importance of uh, fixing oneself. And Gurudev always has been preaching for years to us, you know, <coughs> faith in Radha Mohan and do your duty. That's even written, you know, the grandfather established this principle. And I was always thinking, why does it sound so hard, faith in Radha Mohan and do your duty? But actually, man, Surrender to the lotus feet of Radharani and engage yourself in seva. And I think Gurudev has been stressing this so many years to us that we have to engage in seva. In whatever form we can do, we should engage the mind in seva. Otherwise, the mind will engage us. And we know our tricky mind, it can engage us in so many different directions. That's why Gurudev always presses on us. We should do something, you know. We should see everything as seva in our life and not feel that, no, now I'm not doing seva. Everything can become service for her, you know. When we are in our office, when we're typing on the computer, Gurudev often says, feel you're typing for her, become her expansion. Or when we are teaching, we are also in in service, you know. This is actually a very beautiful, practical meditation group that has given us to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, here in Vrindavan, as Suniti Didi pointed out, it's a bit easier because you cannot escape, you know. Everywhere you look around, somebody is doing seva, you know. So you feel also like, okay, I should also do something. Or like, I never see Shama Priya Rasalila sitting. They sit, they don't feel comfortable. They cannot sit and, and relax for a moment, no? They are always, you know, in this seva bhav. So that's very inspirational here to witness. But I agree with Tarun Baba. In the Western world, of course, there are different challenges. And I once heard from Kesha Baba, I just wanted to add this and conclude with that. 
one time I asked him like, Baba, we often hear how to transcend the ego. You know, we always talk about transcending something or transgressing, you know. And then Baba said, actually, it's not about transcending or transgressing. It's actually to flood it with prema. Flood our ego with prema, you know, like imagine you are jumping into the ocean. You're still in, you're still yourself, but you're surrounded by water, you know, you mer like you be feel the water everywhere and you like become in a sense one with that water. Now imagine if constant we are flooded by prema, what it would do to our ego and our mind, you know, we're still, it's still there, but it's, it's totally drowned by it. And that can only come through Kripa, through mercy, if we want to receive, because mercy of Gurudev is flowing 24 7. It's just for us to receive it and get drowned into it. So I like this metaphor of, of Baba very much because it helped me a lot to say, okay, like transcending means I am doing again. I have to transcend. I have to transgress. But I said, no. Better I just drown, you know, better let me just drown into it. So, yeah, I just felt like to share this with uh, our our dear Buddha and Keshav Baba are, are giving us. <laughs> that is, that is so nice, Kupinath. And Tarun Baba, also, very nice. I um, I like also to add something. Two things are important. Where is our platform? One platform is in material world, and there we have to follow the regulative principles. But the result of the regulative principles is dryness, after all. No juice will come. It's maybe a preparation for the next level and uh, that we can see in many things many devotees are doing this lifelong uh, follow the regulative principles that's not bad but it's not the conclusion of all and in that moment we we uh, for, we're getting in the next level the next platform that means Vrindavan to be in uh, inhabitants of Vrindavan. We follow a fixed Ishtadev and uh, getting uh, Siddhadeya, uh, eternal body. And there we come in the mood of a spontaneous loving service. And this mood of this spontaneous loving service creates the Jews, and we can get it even in this life. And then the dryness will, will go. And this is meaning of Vrindavan, to be in Vrindavan. It's one thing is a, in a physical uh, side, we are with the body in Vrindavan, but uh, our whole um, what to say that our meditation, our whole identification has to be in Vrindavan, <clears throat> not as a material body, but as an eternal servant of uh, our Swamini. And the explanation, I, I just uh, uh, now I, I speak what, what Prabhupada is telling in the Chaitanya Charitamrita and the explanations. But what is not written there by his explanation is our special way of following the footsteps of the Manjaris. There is, there, this is only written in the, uh, our Vilakush Manjali and in the Radharasa Sudhanedi of Ananda Das Babaji. He explained this. Prabhupada I, I now I study for many days the, the scriptures of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I cannot find a clear uh, explanation of uh, Manjali Bath. It is a Gopi Bath, 
and it is uh, sometimes it's mixed with Rata and Krishna. So he he is not, yeah, but he not. I could not find one verse in uh, a clear meaning of the uh, of a uh, Radha Dasya. Radha Dasi. This uh, we can only find in the Radha Ras Sudanidi and Villa Kushmanjali. That is our good, 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 good uh, blessing that we get this by Ananda Das Babaji. And even I, I did not see one small verse about the uh, Villa Kushmanjali or other scriptures in the Chaitanya Charita Milta. So what I find out, maybe you can correct me all, that there is no other scripture like this. It is really unique. Even the Chaitanya Charitamrita is not Manjari Bhav. And so we get it clear what is our path. And we have, I like to say again and again, thank you to the uh, commentaries also of uh, Ananda Das Babaji. This is really unique, the scriptures. So Jews will come in the next platform, Vrindavan, Raja Bhumi. Thank you. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe, I feel like I also would like to share something. Um, maybe it's even a question, if I understand right. But I feel so overwhelmed of all the beautiful explanations of all of you. And there are so many pieces of puzzle coming together. And I feel like I need to express that picture that I can see. So. I feel like you are speaking about following the footsteps of our Guru Manjari and um, feeling empty and dry if we are not in the devotional service in these feelings of a maidservant, meaning we are disconnected and living in our physical body um, so I feel like we have such a huge fortune in our life that we have the most expert maidservant so close to us our Guru Dev our Guru Manchari because just by following what he not even says but does because he's a very great example of how to live in the feelings. Like you're saying, we can live in Manjari Bhav in our physical life. There will be no difference um, between the physical body and, and the spiritual body if we can connect to these feelings. But I feel like great examples of Gurudev are like, for example, sometimes when I have been in Vrindavan and I see someone comes who I know has spoken bad about my Gurudev. I all I immediately feel like I don't want to give any love to that person or I don't want to be nice to that person. But Gurudev is always giving love to everyone. Whoever comes and whatever they have done or spoken about anyone, he's always so loving and only making everybody feel loved and good. And now I just want to share one experience that Gurudev helped me to understand, through which Gurudev helped me to understand how to do this. Um, it was Mother's Day a few years ago, and I was speaking to Gurudev on the phone before uh, my husband Kanai's mother came to visit us on the on Mother's Day. And then Gurudev said, 
oh, she's coming. Make her very happy. Only say everything that she likes, anything she wants to do, say it is okay. And just make her feel like she's loved. And then she came and she asked if she can come in with the shoes. And I normally would be like, no, of course not. This is Radha Mohan's ashram. You cannot come in with the shoes. But I said, yes, of course, no problem. Like, I know your, your hips are hurting, so you can come with the shoes. It's okay. And then she wanted to smoke a cigarette on the balcony. And I said, yes, no problem. I will bring you one glass where you can put the ashes. And she was so happy. Like normally she would come and leave after 15 minutes because she's so anxious inside. But after that, she, she stayed for hours and she was like, playing board games with us and having a nice time drinking coffee. And when she left, I felt like, oh my God, Gurudev, like only with this one sentence, just make her anything she wants, make her happy. She, he made me feel like, oh, this is the way, this is the meaning of love is the way, because only through making her so happy, I was feeling happy and I was not at all annoyed of, she being inside with the shoes or anything. I just felt like, oh, I'm so happy that she feels so good now. And, and another association with this that I have in my mind is if Radharani is, has created everything in this world just to make Krishna happy, and Krishna has so many different manifestations and aspects of her and tastes and feelings and situations that he wants to relish and enjoy, then it doesn't matter what some people are saying or doing or how they are acting. I just, as a maidservant in my feelings, should just be giving love to everyone because they are all here only to make Krishna happy. And this is not so easy to do, but that is something that helps me also in my everyday life to, to feel like, eh, Nitai, and <laughs> make happy. This is a wonderful, wonderful example. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Right wonderful. Really, really wonderful. Because at the end, what was at the end? What was the point? Your mother stayed with you, and she had association with with Rasika Sadhuka, Rasika Vaishnava. So you enabled her to spend time with you and Kanai, and she made so much Akyata Supriti. You cannot imagine. So that is the point. That is the whole point of love. And Gurudev can do this because he has that love. He has it in his heart. And if we connect to that source, we can also do this. I, I wanted to say something. Please let me do this. I know that the tikas from my Gurudev to Vilapakusa Manjali are beyond this planet. We all know that. But please, in I feel Guru Baba speaking through me. We should always remember how Vilapakusa Manjali came into place. We always should remember that Baba only started Tika on Vilapakusa Manjali after he got the manuscript from the lectures of Ananda Kopal Goswami. So we have to always remember this in our heart. I know. 70-80% is Baba, I know. But please remember that in Baba's original edition of Vilabakusa Manchali, he is giving credit at footnotes to everything from Ananda Kopal Goswami, and then he elaborates on that too. So it is both Baba's most wonderful realization, everybody knows, but also we should, when we have this in our heart, we should always give credit and thanks 
to such a highly elevated soul from whom Baba got the manuscript. And this is a very mysterious story how Baba got this manuscript because it was stolen and and one, one Krishna Matrasi Papa, he memorized all these written notes. And somehow these written notes came into Baba's hands. And Baba started at that moment, he started giving kata. It is in the introduction to Vilapuku Samanjali, it is there. And from that moment on, everyone was mesmerized by the explanation of my Gurudev. And Baba, many times, he gave credit to. Ananda Kobal Goswami. So I'm, I, don't, I just wanted to share this because this is the proper attitude to give full, full Dandavats to my beloved Gurudev, but also always remember that someone else is giving us incredible mercy too. It is not our lineage. It is Advaita Parivar, but as a huge family of Parivars, we should always be respectful to where these sources are from. So I just wanted to say this, sorry. Thank you, Tanu Baba. You're right, 100%. And I have to also uh, to add that there is only Rupa and Raghunath who give this Manjari Bhav. Without their books and uh, sharing it with us, there will be no other who give this Manjari Bhav. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I cannot find any scripture from others who give this fine tuning, who give this Manjari Bhav. We have to be very thankful to all of them and uh, to those who give the explanation that we can understand it nicely. But actually, it is Rupa and Raghunath. They are these two only who brought this specific bath into our life so that we can get it, or we can share, and we can imagine the feeling of Radha and Krishna and the Manjaris. This is unique. Nobody will give it. I cannot find now. I will, what's uh, um, that, recherchieren? Continue research. You know, I will continue research. But uh, at the moment, there is no other I could find. Thank you, Radha Radha. So I will continue reading the quote from Sriman Bhagavatam. There is no shortage of helpers on the path of devotion. Even if a devotee falls, there are always people behind him that will pick him up. The demigods prayed as follows to Sri Krishna in his mother's womb. O oh Madhava, the devotee can never fall from the path of sadhana. Like the dry scholars and proud and offensive persons, that were discussed in the previous Bhagavata verse. Because devotees are bound by love for you. O oh Lord, you are always protecting them. So they fearlessly step over the heads of all different obstacles and become blessed by attaining the service of your lotus feet. Now, Baba's commentary continues. They will step over the heads of all obstacles, means 
that although certainly great obstacles may cross the path of a progressive devotee, the devotee will simply step over them just as one steps on the chairs of a staircase and thus ascends to Sri Vaikuntha, the blissful abode of God. In other words, if the devotee falls down, he will greatly repent within his mind and the resultant feelings of humility, anxiety and eagerness will help him to attain the great mercy of the Lord and thus become blessed. Experience in the bhajan of Radha Dasya is inevitable. It is as if the maidservant hears Swamini calling her. It is as if the voice of Swamini whose heart is most soft out of compassion, is anointed with the nectar of love when she calls her maidservant. This is not attainable through a small amount of fortune. When such transcendental visions, shpurtis, become very vivid, it is as if it is all really happening. And when the vision vanishes, the devotee laments in a heart-ending way. becoming totally overwhelmed. In this way, an unbroken stream of relish goes on. During visions, and as well as after the disappearance of those visions. The relish of the aspirant satana is also not small. But an offender like me is deprived of this relish. I am chanting because I have a certain quota. but I don't taste the nectar of the holy name. Why should my bhajan be finished after I have completed my quota, my rounds? The quota should be dependent on the relish. That is desirable. The devotee should have a natural love for his bhajan, just as a materialist has a natural love for his wife, children, and money. The heart 
should be filled with eagerness. He should wander around, crying out, Where are you, Radharani? The Taraka Brahma Nama, transcendental sa savior holy name, Hare Krishna, is in the eighth vocative case. The Lord should be called wholeheartedly by chanting these names. Just as a mother is called. Just as a mother is called for by a lost child. Or as a husband is called for by his chaste and loving wife when he is abroad. I am your maidservant, but I have never seen you. Where are you? In which kunja or behind which tree are you hiding? Please show yourself to me once. Save my life by revealing yourself. Look, I am dying. Please cast a merciful glance on me. My life can only be saved if you kindly show me your sweet self with Madhan Mohan and your Sakis. Standing in the shade of a wish-yielding tree on the bank of Radha Kund. Srila Raghunathas Goswami is crying out of separation, inundating the bank of Radha Kund with his loving tears. Suddenly, a transcendental vision comes to him. Swamini calls him in this spiritual revelation. Tulsi, how sweetly is she calling? Her voice is like a stream of nectar that cools off Tulsi's heart that is afflicted by separation. When Tulsi looks around, she sees Swamini standing before her. How many tears of compassion are streaming from her eyes that are illuminated by Mahabhav as she calls her maidservant with a tender heart filled with compassion and a voice anointed with the nectar of love. That honey sweet voice of Swamini is like the nectar of hope that Tulasi has carried in her heart for so long. Tell me, Tulsi, why do you want to see only me? Sri Raghunata, in his spiritual absorption, gives the answer in this verse. O oh, Swamini, ever since I met this Sri Rupa Manjari, who is your merciful gift and who has opened my eyes by teaching me how to serve you, I have desired to see the red light on your lotus light feet. So beautiful. Here is exactly described what we just spoke about. 
Sri Raghunathas in his spiritual absorption. That means he was actually in his material body, right? In this world. But he was in the spiritual absorption. Gives the answer. And it's so beautiful. Oh, Swamini, ever since I met this Sri Rupa Mandari. So, he got it by her, his spiritual master, Rupa Mandari. And she, he was actually in the Manjari bath. So we all got it from Rupa. Clear, now he described it again here in this word. Who is your merciful gift? So gift is a, a, a nice present to him, but also to all of us. And this gift is given by Radhika. Who is your merciful gift? Rupa is the gift to Raghunath and to us. And who has opened my eyes, that means also our eyes. By teaching me how to serve you, I have desired to see the red leg on your lotus-like feet. So beautiful, so beautiful, no? It's... No words can explain the mercy of the words of Raghunath and the meaning behind that, the answer to Swamini. It's so beautiful. Thank you. Since one beautiful maidservant whose name I won't mention, but has opened my eyes. I want to see the red leg of her lotus feet of someone's lotus feet. This, this line again, I want to come back to all is infused by Guru Manjari to us. She's the one who gives the bhav the bhav also to serve Swamini and only to think of her. This is the connection here. Raghunath Goswami is showing so intensively and beautifully. And I feel it's very much this verse is also connected with the first verse of Vilap Kusumanjali. When Rupa is looking through the foliage of the Nikunja and she gets a, a bite on her lips. She doesn't even notice it. But what she does, in that moment, she remembers Tulsi. She says, where is Tulsi? Tulsi should be here also to see this. And she starts running to look for Tulsi. At the same time, Tulsi is looking for her Rupa Manjari. So I feel these two verses actually explain the Sambandha, the Abhideya, and the Prayojan of Manjari Bha Sadhana. So what is the Sambandha? Is the relationship to my Guru Manjari. The Abhideya is to follow in the footsteps of my Guru Manjari because she will bring me to the service of Swamini. And this is the Prayojan, the exclusively one-pointed service to the lotus feet of our Radharani. So this is really the Kripa of, of Ananta Das Bhavaji. And also as Tarun said, Anand Gopal Goswami, whose manuscript Baba got, we are very fortunate. And also, of course, our Gurudev has opened our eyes and heart to understand this. He has infused us with the loving knowledge of how we can become a Dasya Radharani. So I feel so 
overwhelmed and grateful that this verses are being read together with all of you because we cannot even imagine how fortunate we are that this has actually been revealed to us the the sambanda the abhideya and the prayojan of our practice rather Gopina, it's so wonderful this this point you made from the first verse we can actually also see in the first verse what is what what in what matter in what state of consciousness is this prayojan because how can the bites of krishna appear on the lips of rupa manjari this can only happen because rupa manjari and radhika are tat habatmika they are very very close tatatmya no? they are so close that the manjaris feel actually what radhika is feeling and in that so much so that the the bites on the lips of radhika appear on the lips of rupa manjari so here we see actually the quintessence in in ex, in the prayojan so you made such a wonderful point gopinath wonderful this is what what is the highest stage so this is what our our goal actually is and we have to be so close na tarun we have to be in direct contact to our guru dev this is not given by books this is not getting by distance we have to be very close very close then it will go from heart to heart this is the manjari bab is not available somewhere you have to be with your guru you have to be with another manjari and the first manjari who gave it was rupa right and he got it directly from swamini actually goranga mahaprabhu who was krishna and radhika and she got this bath we <laughs> always speak about manjari bath this bath goes from heart to heart not from mind to mind it is uh, is getting from the guru in the heart and this is so beautiful you as your ananda das baba ji and now you are also close with our guru dev sadhu maharaj we get it that's so beautiful radhe radhe if i might yeah no no tell on say no you first 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 always sit first please <laughs> of course i was just thinking that when i imagine that moment when rupa manjari is so much in happiness when radha and mohan are together and she can feel it so much and she can serve so much she loves them so much but she loves her maid servant even much more she loves her maid servant that she will call her she thinks where is she i want her to also feel this so we need someone that also loves us so much that they also feel like this towards me guru manjari feels oh where is my dasi i want that you also feel what i feel that is a loving relationship that is coming by closeness by intimacy and by the feelings of belonging together and we are lucky if we find someone who feels a little bit like this for us when i last if i may share this anecdote i had a talk with our beloved chakshu maybe he is here also in this assembly um he sent me a whatsapp text because he now also has connections to many devotees and they start to read vilapakusa manjali and radha rasa sudanidi and some of them have not this information and he asked me tarun can you help me where actually can we find descriptions of manjari bhav in shastra or in 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 the books so actually there is one when i now gurudev i always said don't read too much books but when i researched that 5 6 7 years before gobinad also knows that i came across a very wonderful book by a scholar and he is called david l haberman he is a disciple of uh, in uh, radharaman uh, guru pariva from the goswamis and he made a wonderful book it's called acting as a way of salvation 
So that's very nice acting. It's you have really to cool. act. You have to act as a way of salvation. So he he was giving a wonderful explanation about Manjari Bhav Sadhana I wanted to share because many, many people, they ask, yeah, but where can we find? We know, we know that Manjari Bhav, because we have the books of Baba, we are in this assembly, we are under the tutelage of Gurudev and every good Rasik Vaishnava, Jayananda Maharaj, Suniti, everyone. But it's very important to also know that the first thing we can read about Manjari Bhav is two places. One is in the books of Naradam Tastakur. He is the one. He is clearly the one who established the beautiful teachings of Rupa Goswami. When you read by Brahma Bhakti Chandrika, he is the one who completely and perfectly established Manjari Bhav Sadhana. And other is also one important point that the disciple of Gopal Guru Goswami, Dhananjai, uh, Jana Chandra Goswami, he too mentions in his Pathati, he mentions Manjari Bhav. So this is nice that we have this very base facts that the Manjari Bhav Sadhana is not something which never happened or which was not described before. It is the gift of Rupa Goswami, Rupa Manjari, and Navartam Das Thakur, and then Vishwanath Chakravadi Thakur, and then Baladev Vidya Bhushan, and all these great Rasika Vaishnavas down to Ananda Das Babaji, to Narayan Maharaj, to Prabhupada. They gave us this most beautiful Manjari Bhav Sadhana. I was so happy to read this from someone who is not in our assembly or is not in our parivar, but he clearly establishes this most beautiful gift of Mahaprabhu in a very, very sweet and very nice way. So we are so fortunate that we can have access to these prayers of Naradam Das Thakur, of Rupa Goswami's wonderful books, and finally, of course, of Baba Stikas to Raghunath Das Goswami's most wonderful Vila Manjali. Radha, Radha, I can see Guru there hiding behind. Maybe he wants to share something. Jai Gurudev, please. Actually, Gurudev has uh, called another good throat. So, uh, yeah, <coughs> we have to give him some rest, but he's listening. Okay. He's actually speaking to us, right? That's the yes. <laughs> I just wanted to say that this David Haberman, as Tarun pointed out, is a very nice uh, scholarly book. Uh, and he's actually a close friend also of Gurudev. And he has been uh, many times here in Munger Mandir. And this was his PhD dissertation, like amazing, like to write your PhD dissertation about Manjari Sadhana. No, it's just a very blessed soul. Um, and when he writes that, what Tarun said that Narodunda Thakur is the one who established the practice, you know, who really revealed everything to us about Manjari Sadhana. I was thinking, like, why is that so? No, and then I remember that. Gora Sundar said so beautifully that, you know, Mahaprabhu left the bhav in the river. I don't know, was it the Kaveri River or for Narottam? No, he told that Padma, one day. Padmavati. Padmavati River, right? There. And then I was feeling like which bhav he left for uh, Narottam? The Manjari bhav he left. Yes. Oh, yes. That was. That's the and then another thing I was feeling that, like, how do we know who is Param Gurudev? How do we know who is Radha Kavina Das Babaji? We know it because of, of Gurudev, because yeah. he shared with yeah. us. Similarly, how do we know about Rupa? Because Raghunath Das Goswami mm -hmm. revealed everything. So it seems like this is this is the process, right, Taram Baba? Yes. Like, yeah, Rupa didn't reveal himself. To us, but Raghunath did. Narodam actually, yeah. actually Habaman also he knows when you talk with him, he knows that actually Rupa Goswami he revealed it, but he revealed it very hidingly. 
He revealed it in the Baba Lhasa Rati verse, the Manjari Bhav, but he never very openly wrote the word Manjari. But you know what also is very, very beautiful that you can see when Mahaprabhu left and when he was here, there was a change. Always the object of desire was Krishna. But then after Mahaprabhu left, the devotees after him, like Navratandas Thakur, Gopal Guru Goswami, Dhyana Chandra Goswami, all this Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, there was a huge shift of paradigm. And the shift was actually that Krishna was not the center of affection, but it shifted to the shift to Radhika's lotus feet. So this is the most prominent difference in Manjari Bhav Sadhana, that actually Krishna is not the center of worship, but actually Swamini is the new center of worship. And this is very, this was never before the time of Mahaprabhu. This is also a very wonderful aspect of, of worship that Bhakti then flows towards Radhika instead of Krishna. And what and how more, more wonderful that in Radha Snehadika. This is also, I like very much this point of this changing in the uh, object of worship, Ashray. Ne? Radhika becomes the shelter, not Krishna becomes the shelter. Like if we, when you read Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, how many times is Prabhunanda Saraswati saying, worship with, you can worship Krishna, but without worshiping Radha, nothing. I like this very much. So, Tarun Baba points out a very, very nice thing because uh, this is the reason Gauranga Mahaprabhu appeared. Without glorification of Srimati Radharani, then, then glorification or, or any sadhana of Manjari Baba may not happen. So therefore, Goranga Mahaprabhu want to, want to show us, want to teach us most precious things. It's Unnato Ujjalasa and uh, most... Uh, <laughs> Before Mahaprabhu never never revealed this this secret, this Baba Urasarati. So Tarun Baba explained very nicely and shift Krishna worship to to Radhika's worship. This Guru Dev used to say uh, Bhagavad Gita ten ten. Uh, our goal is Krishna, and then assign Krishna, and then slowly. Progressively attain ultimate goal of uh, life. This ultimate goal of life, we may say, Srimati Radhika. Also, we, might, we may say, Radha Dasham. This Manjari Baba, we may, we may say. Radha. I feel it is a progression. There is a progression in the revelation. Like when Rupa Goswami came, it was him who, who was favored by Mahaprabhu in the way that Mahaprabhu asked everyone to bless him because he was the one who could feel the feelings when he was dancing in front of uh, Lord Jagan. And then later on, when Rupa and Raghunath had left, and when they all were taught by Jiva Goswami, who was a very great scholar, but he, Naratam, was especially known for his emotional expressions through Kirtan. So in his Kirtan, all would become crazy, all would become mad. So I can see that the progression 
towards the feeling, feeling the expressions of love, of divine love, of Srimati Radhika's love, was the desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through Naraka. He is choosing his mandris through which she wants to accomplish different, different phases, it seems. And Gurudev once personally told me that Narottam is like Goranga Mahaprabhu came and was speaking through him, was revealing through him what was the next step in our relationship to discover this Darcy bath and how to reveal it more specifically. And even now to this day, we see, although we have the scriptures, we have the some glimpse, we know that we are Radha Dasis. Maybe we are lucky we have some taste to find out the secret, but to find someone who's really giving you these detailed steps in the daily sadhana and how to develop the feelings if I am like a stone. This is the mercy of Srimati Radhika and she is revealing herself to us and that is really something so precious that cannot be uh, cannot be counted in money or in in any amount of any good fortune as it is happening to ourselves right now. And we are lucky and we are very blessed that we can experience it and that we can stay you know, fixed to the low of the speed of our Guru Mandri through all the different stages that we have to go through to come, you know, become completely blessed with the feelings of the Darcy. For me, for me, actually, Kishori okay. and also. The Kishori made such a wonderful point today. Kishori, I like this very, very much. Very, very much. How to please, how to please. Yeah, it is true because many, many don't see it like that. But if you do it, you really do something very wonderful. Like with your mother, like like father, like cousin. It doesn't matter. You do it like that. I had once also a devotee friend here and he was ashamed that he was still smoking. So I told him, we can go outside to the balcony and we can smoke. And he was relieved and he was happy. So this is, I, I really thank you so much. We're talking very high philosophy, beautiful philosophy. But your point is really one of, which is hard touching that we can, you know, this book is called Acting as a Way of Salvation. Gurudev is always saying love in action. So I do, I have to do this. I have to act. We all, I, I am a, I'm a big, I think and think and think, but actually the pleasure and the relish comes from action. Thank you so much for this wonderful example. Okay, this is our Guru Dev showing example. I have no idea how to do this without Guru Dev. Sometimes it I can do and main, 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 mostly not so. Only to thank Guru Dev. But what you feel, I feel is very nice point in the text that we can stop reading for today. Or you want to continue and stop somewhere else? Maybe somebody, if we want to keep going until three, then maybe we can share more. But I feel like in the text is a nice place to stop. Actually, I just wanted to say that one can draw a beautiful line between this verse where Raghunath Das Swami is showing us the process of how we are intimately connected to our Guru Manjari. One can draw a line to Narottam Das Thakur's Pratna in Prema Bhakti Chandrika. There is one beautiful scene described when Radharani is sitting on a bed surrounded by her maidservants. And suddenly she spots a very beautiful, shy, new manjari 
sits in the corner and she asks, Hey Rupa, who is this beautiful new manjari? I've never seen her. She's such a beautiful girl. Who is she? And then Rupa said, She belongs to Manjulali Manjari. She's belonging to her. And then Radha is very, Swami is very happy and says, bring her here, bring her close to me. So Manjulali Manjari is Lochanaka Swami, Guru of Narottam Das Thakur. And here again, it's established that the process is that Guru Manjari introduces us to Swamini. So I, I just felt it's a beautiful line we can draw from this verse to Narottam Das Thakur's partner because we just were sharing about him. So it just came to me I felt to share that. Maybe one, once more you can read this last O oh, Swamini. This yes. was a key. This is a key. Swamini. I will read a little bit before. <laughs> yes. Srila Raguna Das Goswami is crying out of separation, inundating the bank of Radha Kund with his loving tears. Suddenly, a transcendental vision comes to him. Swamini calls him in the spiritual revelation. Tulsi, how sweetly she calling. Her voice is like a stream of nectar that cools off Tulsi's heart that is afflicted by separation. When Tulsi looks around, she sees Swamini standing before her. How many tears of compassion are streaming from her eyes that are illuminated by Mahabhava as she calls her maidservant with a tender heart filled with compassion and a voice anointed with the nectar of love. That honey sweet voice of Swamini is like the nectar of hope that Tulsi has carried in her heart for so long. Tell me, Tulsi. Why do you want to see only me? Sri Raghunathas, in his spiritual absorption, gives the answer in this verse. Oh, Swamini, ever since I met the Sri Rupa Manjari, who is your merciful gift and who has opened my eyes, by teaching me how to serve you. I have desire to see the red light on your lotus feet. Here, here we also have this very, very beautiful, you see, open my eyes. So immediately the verse, O Makyana, Timirandasya, Gyananjana, Salakaya. This is basically standard program when you pay obeisances to your Gurudev. But actually this verse is in the beginning of Prema Bhakti Chandrika and now by the mercy of Sadhu Maharaj, our Gurudev and Narayan Maharaj and Ananda Das Babaji, we can now understand what it actually means to have the eyes opened. So in the beginning, of course, we know, okay, eyes are opened, we are sold. Okay, we are not this body, we are the soul. Eyes are getting opened with this knowledge. 
But what is the profound and deep meaning of Oma Jnana Timirandasya? Divya Jnana. So this Divya Jnana culminates in knowing our spiritual form. This is Oma Jnana. So Gurudev opens our eyes so that we have a glimpse of understanding that we have the chance to act as mantras of Swamini. This actually means Oma Jnana. Timinandasya. This is Divya Jnana. Divya Jnana Rite Prakashita. This is what means Diksha. This is what means this opening of the eyes. We have the grey star. We have pollution in our eyes. But Gurudev is coming and he is giving ointment. And uh, Gorgovinda Maharaj is giving a very wonderful example how Gurudev is opening the eyes with um, with the with Padma, with the lot with the with a balm, a salt, a cream made of lotus. It heals the gray star. So the gray star of our eyes is healed by the creeper of Gurudev. And so we can see actually the mirror is then reflecting. Cheto Darpana Marjanam. And then at the end we are very happy to see, wow, I have long hair. <laughs> I am a I am a I am a mantra. So this is what actually Gurudev's job is doing. He is trying to open our eyes by always making the same point. Be fixed, be in Stai Bath. This will open our eyes. This is so beautiful. We can find this many, many times, this opening of eyes. It is also the first step because only then with this body, what we get by the mercy and the bath, we get by the mercy of the Gurudev from his guru and so on. Then we can start to serve. But even then we need the mercy of Swamini. That she appeared to our spiritual eyes. So that means Gurudev bring us to this point. But then Swamini, Swamini's mercy has to come. That she accept us there. That we can do the service. And we can see in Raghunath's example, no? he is there in his form and he is meditating on her, but it needs her mercy that she appeared to him and called him. The mercy of the Guru bring us to this point, but then we need also the mercy of the Swamini. And this will come automatically because of the blessing of the Guru, because Swamini actually is the source of the Guru's mercy. But we have to cry for this. It is not that it is automatically, when we know all this, uh, steps that it's coming. We need this heart full crying to her that she will reach, that she will come and give us the view and the mercy of the service. We can understand in this verse. Not read, read, read. I, uh, the, I am feeling also so inspired by Gopinathaya, how he is today speaking only about this loyalty to Guru Manjari. That Gurudev is always saying that Guru is not the goal. Radha Mohan, Radha Rani is the goal. Guru is not the goal. And we want to make happy to Radha Rani, but she is only happy when we are making happy to our Guru Manjari. Like Gopinath said this, she belongs to Manjulali Manjari example. Then Radha Rani is so happy that she says, come bring her close to me. So I feel it's also so nice that we can just even be as blind as we are, but just have faith and trust in our Guru Manjari because he's, she is the only one who has ever given us a glimpse of these feelings. 
And we know that she can teach us this. And here we have also the very important point Gurudev was making last Wednesday or Sunday. I don't remember correctly. <laughs> so many painkillers. So this, uh, this point Gurudev was making, we are so fortunate because of Parampara. We have this unbroken Parampara. We have this beautiful, beautiful gift given down to us through Parampara. Gurudev got it from his Gurudev. And he got it from his Gurudev, my Gurudev got it from Kunja Bihardas, Babaji Maharaj, and all this is coming down. And it is said like in the Bhagavatam, when the fruit is coming down from the tree and the parrots eat the fruit, the fruit is becoming much sweeter. So all this nectar which uh, is coming down through Parampara is getting sweeter and sweeter. So Gopinath, he made this wonderful point, this loyalty to Guru Mantra and of course, to Gurudev, which is not the goal, as we know, Radhika is the goal. But this, this nectar is the sweetest nectar because he has got it from his Gurudev, who has got it from his Gurudev. So this fruit is so sweet, there is no other place on the market, in a, like in a true parampara. What? Karun Baba. We also have to think about that the flow, we have to continue the flow. Otherwise, it's becoming a pond, like Gurudev said. If we, we are doing it, no? This, we try to. <laughs> we have to Gurudev, Gurudev is inspiring us to do it like that. Gopinath, yeah. everyone is sharing, everyone is giving yeah. beautiful, beautiful nectar. This is what Gurudev is doing with us. I feel also that Gurudev has not said one word in his class. He did say one word. He said everything. He said everything. He's speaking to everyone. <laughs> it's so special. Anytime that you are speaking, I feel Gurudev speaking. So everyone. It is happening. <laughs> he knows. Nothing. He knows. Gurudev is smiling. He knows. <coughs> it's, oh. Fernanda, do you have to repeat? You have to become the voice of Gurudev. You talked about my my what? Gopinath, maybe you can repeat what Gurudev said because we didn't hear it so well. Yeah, I try to be the pirate now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, his voice is very much uh, suffering from the cold and the cough. But he was saying that today, Kishore, you inspired me with this verse because Ranga Manjari, my Guru Manjari, her seva is Alta putting red luck on the feet of Swami. And her name is Ranga Manjari and her seva is Alta, putting the red luck. So this verse today made Guru very inspired. He was just saying this. <laughs> 